Let's discuss the eight worst foods for your skin. So typically, if a person has a skin problem, they may go to a dermatologist, right? And they get a diagnosis, and then they get a treatment, maybe a, a some type of uh, steroid cream or something to reduce inflammation, or maybe they don't. They might just cover up the skin problem with some type of makeup or use some type of cream or some type of remedy. Today, I'm going to talk about some real common things that people ingest that cause the problem so then you can avoid it. It's not normal to have all these skin problems, right? And so if your biochemistry is messed up or your hormones are altered, um, the thing to focus on is what you're inputting into the machinery, into your body. All right, so let's start from the top. Number one, you have low-fat foods. Okay, let me explain this. And this relates to some of the other points as well. But 50% of your cells, I'm talking about the membrane of your cells, especially in the skin, are made out of saturated fat. So we've been told so many times to avoid saturated fat, and we replace those with other types of fat or go low fat. And that is one way to make your skin look very unhealthy. Saturated fat is totally okay to eat as long as you don't add all the other things that come with it, like sugars and things like that. And also if you can digest the fat too, if you have your gallbladder removed, for example, that might be an issue, so in which case you just have to take some bile salts. But also what is in fat? You have all the fat soluble vitamins, which are really important for your skin. You got vitamin A, which is a essential for your skin. You have vitamin D, very important as an anti-inflammatory. Vitamin E is an important antioxidant. You have also vitamin K. And number two is, of course, the obvious sugary foods. If you have acne and you want to get rid of your acne, most of the time, all you have to do is get rid of the sugar because the sugar increases the insulin and insulin increases androgens that enlarge your sebaceous glands the oil glands that are involved with acne. And it includes the obvious stuff like don't drink your sugars. And I'm not just talking about sodas. I'm talking about like juice, like fruit juices, the worst. It's just your pure sugar. It's all pasteurized, which is sterilized. It's equivalent to drinking a soda. Just take a look at a diabetic. What kind of skin do they have? They have a lot of issues with skin, uh, not just on their face, but throughout their body. In their lower ankles, they have these little uh, black and blue spots. They might have this uh, pigmentation issue uh, around the, the neck area, the folds of underneath their arms. Uh, sometimes they have a higher incidence of polycystic ovarian syndrome where they have more acne. They get a higher incidence of skin tags, brown spots, because of all the oxidation that's occurring with the high sugars. Number three, grains. And the thing that they make out of grains called alcohol. Some people are going to disagree. They're like, oh yeah, whole grains are really good for the skin. Really? So what part of that grain is good for the skin? Is it the gluten that ends up creating bowel issues that then creates all sorts of problems with your skin, psoriasis, eczema, um, even other autoimmune diseases on the skin itself? You got lectins in these grains. And not to mention, they're, they turn into sugar and that will increase the blood sugars and create those other issues we talked about in number two. Grains are also high in omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-6 fatty acids are inflammatory. And so they're not good for your skin. They're not good for your gut. Your skin is a really good reflection of your liver. If you have poor skin, chances are your liver is not doing well. Number four, which kind of relates to number three, vegetable oils. Now, it sounds like you take these vegetables and you're squeezing them and making this healthy oil, but really it's uh, grain seed oils or just seed oils in general. That's how they make the vegetable oils. So that would be the corn oil, the soy oil, the canola oil, the cottonseed oil. These are really badly processed. They have solvents in them and they create inflammation of your skin. And they compete for the omega-3 fatty acids, which you need as an anti-inflammatory. Because if you look at like a really important uh, food for your skin, people will say, well, oh, salmon, you know, um, things high in omega-3 fatty acids, cod liver oil. Well, guess what? If you're taking an omega-6, they compete. So there's competition. So you're not going to get the absorption of omega-3. Number five, processed protein, as in soy protein isolates, 
or even hydrolyzed soy protein. Now you're going to see on, if you do a search on Google, like, oh yeah, it's really good for the skin. Well, I know firsthand just dealing with a lot of patients who have gone on diets with the soy protein isolates and you're consuming something very unnatural, a highly processed, super low fat plant-based protein that I've noticed that a person may benefit from maybe some weight loss, but man, when they lose weight, they don't look good. It dries out their skin, their hair, they look older. And I'm talking about this diet, which is low carb. It's called Ideal Protein. They use very poor quality proteins, and that's what soy protein is. It's a lower quality, uh, not very bioavailable protein. I mean, maybe it might be good for animals, certain animals like horses and things like that, if they need more protein because it's a legume. I mean, horses are not carnivore, they're vegan, and so are cows and sheep and goats. But when humans start doing this processed protein powder, there's some side effects. If you look at the side effects from uh, soy protein isolates, you get bloating, skin problems, skin allergies, headaches, indigestion, fluid retention, obesity, and I'm not kidding, that was one of the side effects, as well as diabetes. I mean, look it up. Very interesting. I recommend doing a quality, very natural protein like eggs, fish, seafood, grass-fed meats, things like that. But eggs, especially the yolk, is really, really high in vitamin A. It's a great source of protein. Do you realize that there's more protein in the egg yolk per volume than there is in the egg white? Interesting. All right, number six, a lot of people have skin problems due to milk and even whey protein powder. Why? Because this milk is meant to grow an animal and then when you consume it or products of milk, sometimes those hormones can affect the sebaceous gland and give you problems with your acne. So milk may be a problem for you. Next one on the list is low antioxidant foods, okay? Like let's say you don't consume any vegetables or you're doing white bread or you're doing processed food or you're doing junk food. All of those don't have antioxidants. And the antioxidants in the food that normally comes with healthy food, not just vegetables, but even grass-fed meats have antioxidants as well. All of that protects the skin against damage like from the sun, from pollution, all these things, and even from eating sugar. And when you're out in the sun and you don't have enough of these antioxidants, you might be at risk for getting uh, uh, skin cancer and uh, more problems with the skin. So it's the antioxidants that protect the skin. And number eight, gut flora destroying foods. That would be like the artificial sweeteners, sterile foods, like box foods, canned foods, pasteurized, you know, juices and other foods, refined foods, soups, things like that, things that have a long shelf life. When you destroy the gut flora, you end up with rosacea. That's that red cheeks and your skin does not look that great. And so your microbes live on uh, fiber. And so a wide variety of different uh, plants like salads combined with protein would be a really good combination for helping your skin. So the variety of vegetables in your salad also increase the diversity of microbes, which can help you. So when you have this low-fat, processed, plant-based protein powder and think it's really good for your skin, you might want to think twice. The skin does really well on higher amounts of fat, lower amounts of sugar, nutrient-dense with lots of phytonutrients. Now, a couple other things that can really help your skin. And I've talked about this in other videos. Fasting. Fasting it increases autophagy. Autophagy cleans out the old damaged cells of your body and rejuvenates your skin and other tissues in the body. Fasting also increases the diversity of your microbiome, which is interesting. The sun is good for the skin as long as you don't get burnt. You need that vitamin D for the skin. And uh, if you ever see people that don't get any sun, the skin does not look that healthy. So you want to get some sun, but not to the point of being burned. Cod liver oil is my go-to supplement. It has not just vitamin A, which is essential for the skin, but omega-3 as well, and vitamin D all together. Whereas fish oils don't have the vitamin A, only the omega-3 fatty acids. Stress reduction is very important. I have noticed people have skin problems just by going through a lot of chronic stress. So do what you can to eliminate the stress. And also to counter that, I would do more exercise as well. That can help release a lot of the built up stress that you have. And of course, the obvious things like decreased smoking. Uh, smokers usually have aged skin 
uh, and people who drink even the wine, they, it ages the skin prematurely. So this should give you a good starting point to really have healthy, vibrant skin so you don't end up at the dermatologist's office and you don't have to cover up um, different skin problems. Now, I have another video on what foods to eat to prevent wrinkles. And if you haven't seen that one, I put it up right here. Check it out.